We wanted to become a airline that operates and flies with drones. And one of our main focus today is cities because we, we see it as, as, our, as our more important than uh, customer. Hi everyone, I'm Esther Kovac, co-founder of Drone Talks, and I'm here uh, in Las Vegas at the Commercial UEV Show second day, where I am really lucky, I'm opening my day uh, talking with a very important, powerful person, Santiago Barrera, who is the CEO of Aerolop and coming from Ecuador. Hi, Santiago, thanks for uh, having uh, me, actually, oh, uh, no. and, hi, uh, at the show. Oh, yeah. Hi, Esther, and thank you for having me. Very exciting. Amazing. So if someone doesn't know you, could you please share how you started to work with drones and okay. what's the background? All right. So, so really quick, uh, so I'm an aerospace engineer, graduated in the U.S. And when I did my thesis back in 2003, I did it on drones. And I did it with Pedro, who's my partner today at Aerial Group. Uh, then when I did my master's, my MBA, I also did a thesis on the Latin American market for drones. Uh, so I've been in drones back and forth. Uh, in my life, I switched a little bit away from it. I, I was an entrepreneur in the renewable energies, uh, biomedical, and in other areas. And prior to joining the team with Aerial Loop, I was the senior director of business operations at Virgin Galactic. Amazing, but you know, renewable energy, uh, and they are all kind of get together with drones one way or another, right? Yeah. Like, uh, so they are kind of a use case for it. So it's all related. Uh, so what the company does today, I went up to the web page, it's very impressive, you know, with your map <laughs> everywhere, yeah. you know, in the Latin uh, and Middle American areas and even, even uh, the South. So I was just wondering, what do you do uh, in a nutshell? In a nutshell, okay. So, so we saw all these companies working in drones. And drones is a very vast world. Uh, we wanted to focus on delivery. So there's inspection, there's security, yeah. we focus on delivery, and we had this hypothesis that we were going to go to Latin America, focus on those countries so that we can get uh, regulatory permits quicker and get experience as an operator. So we wanted to become a airline that operates and flies with drones. And one of our main focus today is cities because we, we see it as, as, our, as our more important than uh, customer because of the value our services and systems bring to the city. So you do meet my daddy very currently, right? If I understood well uh, from your web page. So it's not last mile, it's mid mile. mile. Yes, so we do mid mile. Imagine uh, a metro system that has stations all across a city that are strategically positioned uh, at places where you have high densities of population. Yes. That's what we're doing. And by doing middle mile, it's also simpler for the regulatory agencies because they are approving a fixed route. We're okay. not switching and going to somebody else's house. We're flying A to B all the time. Uh, so that we, we found it as the perfect first step to take into creating these networks uh, for the cities of the future. So you start from an airport, I assume. Yes. Okay, so which airports currently utilize or oh. test, maybe, okay. if you could so, share? So we call it airports. Actually, we call it hubs. Amazing. Uh, our hubs. Uh, imagine small size airports, but they're very small, and we have them positioned in Ecuador, in Quito. We have our biggest network. It's, we have five airports, and between those five airports, we have flights all day. Actually, there was a news uh, that came out a couple of weeks ago in Ecuador that said the airline in Ecuador that has the most flights per week, it's a drone airline. No, wow. And it's true, right? And it's true. Wow. We fly more than any of the commercial uh, Airline. airlines in, in the country. I think it's very impressive. And I also think it's impressive they think about you as an airline solution, not as a kind of like a small drone, uh, yep. but already putting your solution to the airline category in people's mind, in the newspaper, you know. That is super important yeah. because the biggest problem in the drone industry is that people think it's a toy or a tool. We, when we envision, you know, working with delivery and, and we're going to ramp up to a thousand flights per day. And when, for, for you to get there, you really need to think of this as an airline and you have to operate as the company as an airline. As so an airline. Yep. So who are your customers currently? Just the ones which are already public, you know, maybe yeah. you do operation for them. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, definitely. We have, we have many types of customers during our journey. 
uh, but today we have a few that are very key. Uh, the first one are laboratories. Laboratory. Yeah, and big hospitals. Uh, we actually have one of our airports inside a hospital. Uh, we send out medicine, all kinds of uh, paperwork, and then we bring out laboratory samples. That's a really big uh, customer. Another customer is a company called Servientrega. Imagine it's like the UPS, FedEx of Ecuador. They're very big in Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, and Panama. Uh, and they have like 60% of the market share. We're sending packages with them. We started sending envelopes. We send out an average of 80 envelopes per day. But our goal by the end of the year is to transport a thousand of their packages per day. Amazing, very impressive, you know. I knew very little about how, you know, four of our thinkers are the Latin American countries. And how about social acceptance? Did you have any problem? Are people usually positive about, you know, those, those operations because they see it's greener, better for the environment. It's 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 a positive view, or you still fight with this, you know, barriers. It, it, it's a it's a little bit of both. Oh, yeah. So so our solution is environmentally friendly. It has social impact because it reduces traffic. There's a lot of motorcycles in Latin America, and we're planning to reduce at least five percent in motorcycle use by the end exactly. of this year. Uh, and there's also economic impact, but those, that's the good side. The bad side is people are not too aware of drones. And when they see drones flying over their head, they, they start thinking a, a lot of things. Are they surveilling me? Is it, it's, it's also, it doesn't make them feel too secure. So we've done a lot of work on educating the community. If we know a route is gonna go through this line, we go and, and, and our team goes and, and, and educates the whole community saying, hey, look, you might see drones flying over you, but it's us, here's our contact. But that is also, that, it is important for us to, to educate. But do you think, is it governmental responsibility? You know, because a lot of governments are watching us, or is it your responsibility as an operator? Because I feel as a startup, I'm also a startup owner, if I need to knock on every single door myself, <laughs> it removes my focus from yeah. the operator operation, you know, so I feel it should be somehow also government or responsibility. You're right. I, it's a combination of both. So so we we, we want to make sure everybody in our surrounding, all the stakeholders are, are happy, uh, but the government also plays an important role. And in, in, the role they play is in safety, securing safety, having, having the right controls to vet us and, and to understand our operation, and, and, and that we're big on. We, we provide the government with a lot of ground and air safety analysis, a lot of communications back and forth. They can see our operations live if they want to. So I think, yeah, you're right. The government plays an important role in educating most of the community and saying we are here making sure that these operators me are meeting the safety standards. And regarding regulatory approvals, do you have good experiences in the Latin American region? Are they supportive? They give you the approvals or is it still, you know, discussion and during development together, hands by hand yeah. with the regulators? So that was, uh, at the beginning, that was uh, our bet was to go to LATAM because of that. And it has been an amazing and very interesting experience because every country is different. There are countries that are waiting to see what the FAA or EASA yeah. is doing. There are other countries that wanna be the first one. They wanna be on the map as we are leading this transformation. There are countries that have budget. It depends on many things. Yeah. But we have found at least three or four very interesting countries in Latin America that have been working with us. And not only Ecuador, where we yeah. are certified as a commercial operator, but Colombia is working very close with us and, and, and we're very close on opening our first operation in Colombia. Uruguay, we, we were certified as the third company in Uruguay. So we're not the first, there's yes. other two companies. So wow. Uruguay is moving forward, very yeah. interesting. Honduras has also worked with us. So, so it, it's been an interesting experience. That's amazing. So regarding your achievement, how old is the company? Uh, so we are close to becoming three years old. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> it's like a big milestone. <laughs> Almost yesterday. three years old. Yeah, it, it seems like it was yesterday. <laughs> wow. And how uh, big is the company? So we have about 28 employees today. Wow, it's three years. Congratulations. Because we have a big R&D team. Yes. Uh, not only we are an airline that operates, but we also design and build our, our vehicles and our software. Today. In Ecuador, so your production yes. is in Ecuador. Well. So most of our production is in Ecuador, but we are actually a, a U.S.-based company. 
with subsidiaries in Ecuador, Colombia, Honduras, and Peru. Uh, our CTO, Andreas Antonis, is from Switzerland. Uh, we have uh, software designers in Australia, Peru. So we are kind of a one digital, of those digital yeah. global companies. Yes. Yes, we are very similar. You know, we have we have people working from multiple locations. So what's your vision for the upcoming year? So how do you see this? Uh, middle my delivery market, uh, you know, evolving. And do you have any plans to enter into new regions such as Europe? And and what's your view on those? So so this year is the year where we're going to complete the first city network. We are about eighty percent with the Quito city network. We want to close deals with other cities to develop similar systems. Like I said before, these are metro systems in the sky that benefit the city. Um, we're talking to cities in Colombia, Guayaquil in Ecuador. We are coming to the U.S. We're hoping to close some deals. We have a project very interesting coming up uh, with a big state in the U.S. And definitely, we, I think this is the year to start looking at Euro. Amazing. So if the European cities are watching, and I hope they do, and the governments as well, what would be your message? What would you need from them as a first step to be able to operate in European cities and uh, what would be your action to, to to move there or collaborate or how could they uh, uh, set My up? ask is, is to have a conversation. If, if they are interested in looking at a solution that can impact not only the environment, but reduce traffic and I impact the economy, just my, my ask is reach out to us. And we're more than happy to discuss and, and, and propose step-by-step uh, step what we can do together. I think what is very important to mention, you are a proven solution. So it's not something, you know, which is, which is not working. You already fly in multiple countries. So it's not like a theoretical, but already there. Because in Europe, we see this a lot of theoretical, you know, and more like sandbox projects and, and companies a lot of time don't have experience flying, you know, they have, yep. don't have the flight times behind uh, them. That, that is so important. Yes. You know, one thing is when we started doing tests and we flew one time, another thing, and, and we're continuously stressing our operation. Even if we don't have commercial packages to transport, our operators are constantly sending planes. That's that. Because we know the value of that. We yes. know the value of, having 100 flights per day, having 200 flights per day, because we've learned so much and we've, we, uh, what you said is just yes. right on point. Exactly. Thank you so much, Santiago, for awesome. the great interview. We are looking forward to welcoming you at Ariel Cities, hopefully in November at our event. And stay tuned.